Okay, today we are talking about a, an Italian wine, Basso Pischiaro, which means uh, the area of the fishermen from Etna in southern, uh, sorry, from Sicily in southern Italy, from the region of Etna. Now, Etna is fairly well known. It's a, it's a huge volcano. The vineyards are up the sides of the volcano. So although Sicily is a stinking hot place in summer and mild to warm in winter, it does snow on Etna in winter. This vi particular vineyard is around a thousand meters high. So it's one of the highest in Italy, certainly it's the highest in Italy, um, and this is not the highest vineyard. Uh, this producer produces crews um, that go up to 1,300 and 1,400 metres uh, in height. It's technically a cool area, but you're never going to think it's a cool area because of where Sicily sits in the world map and, and climate, um, but it does get very cool. The vines are 100 years old, so very, very old vines. The, it's only been recognised as a premier region in Italy, premier wine region, in the last 15 years. It's the youngest recognised wine region in Italy, yet it has some of the oldest vines in Italy. The, the variety is Norello Mascalese and Norello Cappuccio. Generally you're going to find a blend of those two red grapes in the wine, red wines from Etna. Mostly it's going to be uh, Norella Muscalese with a little bit of cappuccio in it. You rarely see cappuccio on its own. But it blends well with uh, Muscalese. Cappuccio gives a little bit more um, depth to the, the wine, whereas Muscalese is more aromatic uh, and lighter and brighter. If you kind of think about a, a cross between a cool climate Shiraz and a Pinot, that's where this variety or blend of varieties sits. Um, the, there's some very good whites from the same area. Um, uh, the whites are generally made to drink with seafood. Uh, we're not looking at those at the moment, but still they make they produce some phenomenally good whites as well as their reds. Um, this one we're particularly looking at is the Paso Pischiaro entry level, it's just called Paso Pichiaro, it's 2013. 2013 is a very good vintage, uh, 11, 4 to, uh, 12 and 13 are all very good uh, vintages. 2007 is available in Australia, um, kind of similar to Australia, it was a warm year, so it's a bigger wine, yet you can then get, you get your hands on it, you can look at what it looks like as it gets older. They age exceptionally well. I've looked at, personally looked at wines that were 15 years old uh, of this variety and they look pretty staggering. The producer, uh, once again, is, has been producing wines for a long time, but only been stepping up to the world stage recently. As I said, they have a number of crews. I think in all there are five crews as well as the entry level. The crews are different soil expressions, different altitude expressions, so each one is slightly different. If you had them all lined up, you'd certainly notice those differences. It's kind of like Burgundy, even though they're very close to each other. Um, it's amazing how much soil and, and different aspect can produce a different type of wine, even though right next door is, a, is another a completely different crew. So their expression is they um, are now, as with most of Italy, dragging themselves out of the dark ages with their wines, learning how to produce wines in a modern way that's cleaner and more varietal and talks more about the terroir. Italy had been trapped in this um, merry-go-round of um, classic producing wines for a long, long time, and only really in the last 10 years have they started to think about expressing more about what the varietal should taste like and how it represents the terroir that they're in. Um, you see that in Nebbiolo, for example, uh, right now. So with the Etna red wines, it's the same thing. 
If you look back to the middle 1990s and earlier, you're going to look at some pretty um, dense, uh, dull wines, uh, a little bit too much uh, oak, a little bit less uh, handling, uh, clean handling in the vineyard and in the crops and the way the, the vines were handled. Now you're looking at a modern expression of it. Very clean, uh, very pretty wine, yet extremely powerful. Tannic, yep, it's like most Italian wines. Red wines, there's quite a level of, it, uh, uh, of tannin. And like most Italian wines, uh, they're more in the savy spectrum than in the sweet spectrum. So if you're comparing them to Burgundy, Burgundy has that sweet spectrum in it, whereas the Italian wines tend to have that savoury expression. Unlike Australians um, and, and like the rest of Europe, their wines are not made to drink on their own, their wines are made to drink with their food. And the local food there expresses itself well with the wines. Once again, that's the reason why there's no avert sweetness in most of the Italian red grape varieties and their whites as well. So, uh, Etna, interesting place, volcanic soil obviously, high up in Etna, you'd think it was going to be hot, airy, it's not, it's very cool, snows in winter. The wine is an uh, expression of that, it's uh, more along the lines of that burgundy, really aromatic, yet power and structure in the palate. Um, they'll live for eternity, uh, you know, if you ever go to look at a young one, it's probably a good idea to decant it for a couple of hours before you look at it, and you're going to look at it how it really opens up, rather than get to the last glass and it's looking, singing, and you've drunk it all. So, Italy, Etna, Basso Basciato. Thank Woo! you. Love it, Rory. Thank you.